Welcome to the second section of the Mastering Prime Faces video course. In this section, we'll be covering the construction of input forms used in the Prime Faces input components. You'll learn how to use some of the components, lay them out nicely, submit data to a persistence store, and finally, how to validate the data entry. In video 2.1, we'll cover the basics of organizing labels, input components, and messages in a view. To get started, let's create a new view named autoquote.xhtml using NetBeans, and we'll make this view a template client so that it adheres to the template that we've created in the previous section of the tutorial. Create a view by right-clicking on the project in the IDE, selecting New, Other, then select Java Server Faces from the New File dialog. And finally, choose Facelit's template client as the type. Name the file auto quote, and then leave the project folder and created file fields as default. Next, for the template field, let's browse to the facelets template for our project and select it. Then leave HTML as the generated root tag. Click on finish, and the new view should be created with an empty content area. We want to add a nice title to the form along with a brief description. Therefore, let's add an H2 header to the top of the content section, followed by a paragraph containing the brief description. Next, let's add a couple of line breaks after the paragraph before we start our form. Next, add a form element to the view and provide an ID of auto quote form. Note that we do not have the appropriate namespaces in the view by default, so we'll have to add the JSF and Prime Faces namespaces next. To do so, let's go to the top of the view, add them, or in this case, I'll use NetBeans tip to add the necessary namespaces as the errors appear in the form. Next, we need to add labels and fields for our form. And let's begin by adding some details for our user to fill out by themselves. Particularly, let's add the first name, last name, phone number, and email address at which they can be contacted. We can use a standard HTML label element to assign a label to each field, or we can make use of the Prime Faces output label component. In either case, ensure that you provide the for attribute of either and assign them to the appropriate input component ID. In this case, I'm going to use the output label component so that we've got a pure JSF form. We'll use the standard Prime Faces input text components for the first and last name components. For this iteration, let's go ahead and just add a line break between each label component pair. For now, let's go ahead and leave the value attributes empty as we will bind these fields to an entity class in the next section of the tutorial. Let's make use of the Prime Faces input mask component for the phone field. To use this component, you need to add a mask or pattern for the user to enter. The user will be forced to adhere to the mask format. In this case, we'll provide a mask for a telephone number using the 9 to signify a digit. A mask format forces a user to adhere to the pattern that is supplied by the mask. For instance, if we set up a mask format for this phone number, then the user will not be able to enter anything into the field besides a number, and the mask will also require the user to enter a specific number of characters. In this case, the mask will supply the dashes and require the user to enter 10 digits. Other mask characters can include symbols, upper and lowercase a, and an asterisk for the wildcard. Finish completing the input form by adding input text components for the make, model, and year, a text area component for the description, and a calendar component for the required by field. Utilize the Prime Faces output label to provide a label for each field. Doing so ensures the theme-based scanning for the validation errors among other things. Let's leave the command button off for now until we wire up the back end. Go ahead and run your application and let's take a look at the resulting output. As you can see, it's not very well laid out. Let's go ahead and add a panel grid component to help with our form layout. A panel grid will render an HTML table at runtime so we can specify how many columns we would like to use for this grid. Since we are building an input form with labels and components, we should specify a column for each. Ideally, we want to have the same spacing between each component so that the form looks visually appealing. 
In this case, let's add two columns by specifying a two for the columns attribute. Next, we'll need to remove the BR tags as the panel grid is only going to be set up for displaying two columns and each of the JSF components will take up one of those columns. Therefore, we need to make the number of components or tags within the panel grid match the number of columns that we have specified. When we save our application and reload, then you can see that the form is aligned nicely. That does it. You should now understand the basics of form layout for JSF and Prime Faces applications. In the next video, we'll take a more in-depth look at the basics of construction for an input form, including data persistence and wiring the components to the back end.